We're back. Good to see everybody again. It's been a while. We got some gear to review today. We got some unboxings to do. I hope you stick around. Go check out the rest of the channel. Be sure to like and subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. We always talk about film and video stuff. We go on photo walks. We do random adventures. It's a channel that's as ADHD as I am. Um, so join us on our adventures and uh, we hope you'll hang out. Anyway, let's get to some unboxings. First thing we got here, we have a, this is used, but a Sony 10 to 18 millimeter E-mount F4 OSS lens. It's meant for crop sensors, which isn't a problem. I've got an A6400. Uh, we've got an A6500 as well. So like this will work perfectly with that. With the 6500, you'll have IBIS and you know, OSS, so that's fantastic. But we learned from a couple of YouTubers like uh, Matty Hapuya and I'm trying to think of who else did the hack. It might've been like DSLR shooter or I'll link down below who I uh, found these video, this, uh, this little hack from. It just about covers full frame when you have active stabilization on and you're using something like the a7 IV or a7s III. So from 12 to 18 millimeters, you get full frame coverage. And that's perfect. Like that's a super wide lens. It's got OSS, like it's extra stable and it's Sony. Um, the other nice thing is these lenses normally go for about 900 bucks. Let me, let me check and see what I got this for. Uh, so this lens normally around eight or $900. We got it for, let's say 565, 565. Fantastic. It's used, um, I believe it is in like new condition. Uh, it comes in the box, it's got everything. So we're gonna check it out today. Make sure it's all right and it's all looking good. Phone away, I don't need that hanging out. And uh, yeah, let's get to the unboxing. So it's got the original box with it, which is always a good thing. If you're thinking of reselling a lens, you actually get a little bit more if you have the original box that goes with it. You know, just uh, getting a little bit of extra bang for your resale value there. We have the instruction manual, it's even in the bag, 2012 Sony Corporation. So this is like an older lens, but um, I've heard it works really well on the a7 IV, which is the camera that we just got. We just traded in a whole bunch of stuff at uh, some camera stores down south on our RV trip. Check that out, link in the description. All right, wrapped in bubble wrap. Here we are. That's just about it for the box. Let's get this out of here. All right, this bag. I think it. they said it might have some cosmetic damage, which is not an issue. Uh, as long as it works properly, that's all we're concerned with. Zooms just fine. Focus ring, I feel a little bit of friction in there, but that's not a big deal. Lens looks perfectly fine. Got a nice clean looking lens there. Nice and fresh, comes with a back cap too, the Sony one. So yeah, we're looking good. Super compact little lens too. Pop the lens hood on, looks great. Sweet, let's test this out. So this is the uh, Sony a7 IV. I right now have the uh, the Tamron 28 to 75 f2.8, which is a lens that I had before, luckily, um, which made the conversion over to full frame real nice and easy. We already had some full frame lenses, but uh, let's check out this crop sensor lens on here. We're gonna leave it in full frame mode. I think I have it turned off of like automatic. Oh, that's cool. So the, um, the front, this ring here where you put the actual lens hood, that's cool. It doesn't move when you zoom. So you don't have that thing winging about. Uh, at 10 millimeters, let's see, is this, is this, did this go to crop mode? Uh, still learning this camera. Oh, okay, all right, I get it now. This was in um, 60p, so when it's when it's in 60 frames per second, 4K 60, it's gonna crop in a little bit. And that's actually kind of perfect for, uh, for what I've been using this for. So if I leave it on uh, off for APS-C shooting, in 60 frames per second, since you're already cropped in at that um, APS-C level, you end up getting nice active stabilization from the A7 IV. Let's get this lens hood on there. Actually, I'll flip that over. Sony logo on the top like that. Looks good. That's fantastic. I'm excited. This is gonna be really cool. Let's check out some example footage. Here's what we got. I'm gonna get to the bottom. 
currently 7 a.m. Um, on the way to a gig with Scott and replacing Steven for the day. So, it's going to be an interesting one. Working with green screens. We'll see you there. We're ready. Hey, we're pretty much ready. Let's stand and walk here. I'm gonna catch it, dude. Yeah. Scott, good job on that video. The next one, it's other okay. benefits of a trust may include. Mm -hmm. And then it ends up down to oversight public record. Public record. Do you Six bullets. My down. copy. Change zero zero two. Is there a stapler over there? In that box that they... Um, yeah, right there in the box. There it is. Thank you. Um, Holy shit! What's that? Chunky Every stapler. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. I stopped feeding a while. Format. Format. So this is A002 here. Starting at scene four, eight. eight. Eight, okay. I just keep these in case you misplace. Okay. She doesn't trust me. <laughs> No, that is, is that because you're imprudent, extravagant, and like... <laughs> yeah, I must be. <laughs> 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 imprudent, imprudent, extravagant, and unable to manage my... All right, so we've been using this camera setup all day. I've got the Sony 10 to 18 millimeter F4 on the front, which I think is working fantastically. Um, you let us know in the comments, though. Well, we're going to keep shooting. Peace. All right, so editor stay realized something. Basically, I was editing that whole thing, and um, I had done all this talking about the A7 IV and the 10 to 18 millimeter, and then I only used the 10 to 18 millimeter on the A6400. That's my little kind of like take along vlog camera. It's real lightweight. It's great autofocus, all that stuff. But um, now you can see the 10 to 18 millimeter at 10 millimeters with active stabilization in the A7 IV. Um, I'm just hand holding the dang thing at 60 frames per second. So it's that additional kind of crop in for both of those features will give you, you know, this look where you're not getting vignetting around the edges or anything like that. It looks good. Um, I even have the lens hood on. You can't even tell. Oh wait. Yeah. And it is, it is not in crop mode, by the way, I, I should specify that it's not in crop mode. It's still in full frame mode. Um, but I'm going to switch it over to non-active stabilization and then I'm going to go back to 24 frames a second as well and you'll be able to see that difference between um, like the vignetting around the edge and just how wide it really gets at 10 millimeters. Um, I'll even take the lens hood off. I'll kind of show you that stuff. Anyway, let's get to it. A little secondary note there that I just figured out. Um, when you are in 60 frames per second, you are in APS-C crop mode. Let's get on that. All right, so now all we have done here is change to 24, which effectively turns off the APS-C crop mode. And you can see just how much wider this frame has gotten, but there's also vignetting around the very, very edge. Let's see if taking off the lens hood helps with that. So this is at 10 millimeters right now. And you can see there's still a little bit of vignetting. It's kind of circular around the very, very edges. But honestly, that's not that bad for 10 millimeters on full frame. You know, you've got, you've still got a really, really wide angle view. You've got autofocus. You've got all these other features that will make this lens pretty sweet. Um, and then if you punch into just 12 millimeters, now all of a sudden your vignette is gone, you know, and you're, Still in active stabilization, you've got all that going for you, but um, yeah, it's a, it's a sweet lens. You get to work from 18 millimeters up here down to about 12, and all you have to do is just kind of peek up and, and make sure that 12 millimeters is as far as you go. Um, you know, otherwise you'll end up here, but really, from what I can see on the camera itself, it doesn't look that bad to have the, uh, the vignetting around the edge if you really, really need that super wide angle. You know, you can, you can still crop it in post if you need to, but the best is obviously to move to 12 millimeters, 
get rid of that little vignette and then you have you know your full quality image you're not cropping into the image that you've already recorded let's turn off active stabilization let's see what the effect is then all right so now we're at 10 millimeters with standard stabilization which means active stabilization is turned off it's sort of um widened up the frame even more you can really see that vignetting now. My hand completely disappears up in this top corner. Um, but still a usable lens. And again, going to 12 millimeters, there's slight vignetting. You can see there's there's just a little bit of darkening in my, in my hand as I move it around the edge of the frame. But really, still usable at 12 millimeters with standard stabilization turned on. Um, you know, it's a, it's a really interesting camera we're working with here today. And uh, I'm curious to see what applications this will work well in like we used to use a nine millimeter f 2.8 lens on it's the laua dreamer on um aps-c and that thing is amazing it's almost like a little bit too wide that nine millimeter is just like intense um so we do have a 16 millimeter sigma and the difference between those two is a little bit too great and this i think will fit that that medium range, it will give you some zoom capabilities. Great for vlogging and things like that. You can really like punch in and emphasize your point. Um, and then you can pop back out, stick to 12. It's a little distracting having to look at the 12. So I, I like it with the active stabilization and all that stuff turned on. It really, um, it really makes a difference. And 60 frames per second, obviously. Anyway, let's get back to the video. Peace. All right, well, let us know what you think of this thing down in the comments below. Thanks for watching. I'm really excited to use this as of right now. I obviously haven't checked it out or used it in the field at all. So I'm excited to see what comes of it. Looks like it'll work great in especially the 4K60 mode on here. Otherwise, I can switch to APS-C mode if I want to or just shoot 12 millimeters and higher. So yeah, really interesting pickup for around 500, 600 bucks. It was a good deal, found it on Amazon. Uh, if you'd like to check out our links below, we do have some affiliate links. We'd love if you chose those if you're, if you're actually going to go buy something. doesn't cost you anything. Um, just helps uh, support the show a little bit. If you'd like other ways to support the show, check the links below. Appreciate you coming by. We'll uh, check out some more stuff here in a second. Peace.